So if you struggle with throwing through the point in the javelin throw, this is the video to watch. I'm gonna show you how to throw through the point, dive the javelin, and stall the javelin today. Let's get started. All right, so just to get started here, there's a few things we need to be aware of. When we're talking about throwing through the point, what we're really talking about is knowing where the handle of the javelin is in relation to the nose of the javelin as we're throwing. And because the handle is, of course, where we're gripping the javelin, we then need to know where our hand is traveling in relation to the nose of the jab. So I've got a few example throws here. Um, the first one is diving the javelin, so that's nose down. That means I'm throwing the handle up through above the, the nose of the javelin. And of course you can see it fly like this. When you see that javelin land, that tail is gonna be super high in the ground or in relation to the ground. So the nose is gonna be here and the tail is gonna be high. Um, if you're throwing really, really far, um, generally speaking, and you go nose down, it's going to go super short. You're not going to get nearly as much distance out of it. Uh, next example is what I call plowing or stalling the javelin, and that just means that the path of the handle is traveling underneath of the nose, and what you get is generally a higher flight, and eventually it stalls out and drops out of the sky. And most of the time, you're gonna see a javelin land flat, or at least at a very low angle into the ground, and of course, you're not gonna get the same kind of distances uh, as if you were throwing through the point. All right, now, throwing through the point, for me, is the ultimate goal. I'm trying to get the handle of that javelin to travel through the shaft of the javelin, through the nose, and at an appropriate angle so I can get the, ma the maximum amount of distance. Now, the angle of the javelin is super important and you kind of have to play around with throwing and figure out you know, what works for you the best. For me, I'm thinking between 37 and 40 degrees, that range is gonna give me the best trajectory. It's gonna give me the best, if I can throw through the point, give me the best distances. Now, those angles do depend on weather conditions, the wind, what direction it's coming in from. Uh, it also depends on how far you're throwing and what kind of javelin you're throwing. So you've just got to go out there and practice and figure out how to fly the javelin. And sometimes it's just a day where that's your entire focus. It's not about all the other, other technical stuff. It's just learning how to fly the javelin. So there's a few different ways you can control the javelin. One is just simply using your wrist. And that means if the javelin is setting up, set up here, all I'm gonna do is tilt my wrist and you can see what happens to the nose of the javelin. Likewise, if I tilt my wrist down, you can see the nose of the javelin travels down. So what I'm looking for is a comfortable wrist position and then being able to keep the shaft of the javelin in that line the entire time as I'm throwing. Another option for changing the, the angle of the javelin is just simply changing the angle 
or the position of your arm. So the idea is if the, if the hand is super high, I can generally have more of a flat throw. If the arm is super low, then I'm gonna have much more steep throw. So I gotta find some sort of balance in the middle. Now this does impact a lot of other things about your technique and about elbow injuries and shoulder injuries, but I'm not saying you should use your arm to change the angle of the javelin. I'm just saying that that is one way that people do. Uh, my preference is, is really as my hand is traveling into the throw to get a sense of where the pressure of, of the javelin is located. If it feels like there's a lot of extra pressure, then generally it's, the javelin's not aligned correctly. If it feels pretty smooth, like I'm not having to force it, but rather it just travels clean and I can feel it, um, that's a, that's a big plus. I can also then watch the tail of the javelin as it's flying and I can get an indication of if I was pulling, you know, the, the tail down or pushing the nose up or, you know, opposite direction, nose down and tail up. Here's another method of changing the angle of the javelin and that is just simply changing the grip. The new rule javelin has the handle pushed forward towards the nose a bit more and so the weight of the javelin is generally nose heavy which means it's gonna nose over quicker in the, in the air, but that also means that when we're gripping the javelin, we can, we can kind of play and take advantage of that. So like for instance, I use a finish grip, and if I grip really high on that cord, and I set that javelin back, just from here, if I'm uh, using like a very loose finish grip, um, I can feel that there's, there's more weight. The javelin actually wants to, to nose down, and so I'm using my wrist to try and keep it back. If I just simply let go of the handle, you can see, you can see that the nose just drifts down because the majority of the weight is towards the nose. So if I change my grip and I use an American grip or a standard grip, that shifts my hand far, farther up towards the nose. And so as I set up, if I let go of my grip here, it almost balances, almost there's definitely less of the weight pushing down here. And so I can feel that as I'm setting up here, the majority of the weight really feels like it's quite balanced in my hand. And so um, I don't feel like I'm having to use my wrist nearly as much. It's the same thing though, if you're using um, like an incorrect grip, like a finish grip, but the finish grip is really, really low on the handle, you're gonna feel a slightly different uh, balance point with, with the javelin. You can see it's now, nose is coming up, tail is dropping down. So now the tendency, if I'm having a very loose grip, the tendency is for the nose to rise up. So one of the uh, drills that I like to do, it's really more of a game, I, I call it angle play. And basically what it is, is I just take my athletes out to the field and I have a pretty decent understanding of, of how to control the, the javelin. And so I just basically tell them, okay, I'm gonna throw nose up and you follow me. And so I throw nose up and then they try and throw nose up as well. Uh, same thing, I can, I can throw with the, the nose down or I can what we call wag the tail. So I throw the tail off to one of the sides and they basically just try and copy what I'm doing. And in that maybe half an hour of throwing, they're gonna gradually figure out how to control the, the, the flight of the javelin. And I think that's a terribly important thing, especially like today, it's a little bit windy, uh, although it's coming from my back. Uh, I might go to the other end of the field and this would be a day where I'd take my kids out and I'd be out there throwing into the wind and playing around with these angles and watching how the javelin flies. Likewise, I can my field is big enough, I can go off to the side and now I've got a crosswind or like today, I've got a little tailwind down the runway and so what a great opportunity to play. So one quick tip I wanted to include and that is sometimes the idea of controlling the nose is kind of like a, a, a difficult thing. It's almost like, um, you know, the nose is, is sort of heavy and so it's a little bit harder of the you know end of the javelin to control so in some cases instead of having you know the idea hey control the nose of the javelin instead control the tail of the javelin the tail of the javelin is a lot easier to move than moving the nose the nose of the javelin is the heavier end of the javelin and so it's a lot easier to move this end than it is to move this end I have to push, put a lot more force here 
in order to make it do what I want. So as I'm throwing, I'm actually throwing and thinking in my head that I'm going to be controlling the tail in that location more so than trying to control where the nose is. All right, I will end it there. If you have questions or comments, please put them in that comment section below. If you like videos like this, please consider subscribing. And until I see you next time, have fun and throw far. One quick tip I wanted to include, and that is, <laughs> dang it, I already forgot what I was gonna say. Uh, oh yeah, okay. <laughs> now, if I shift back and I use a finish grip and I put my fingers farther above the cord and I do the same thing and I let go, you can see that the nose of the javelin drifts down and hits my nose.